there's something so special about Gettysburg. It has so much history, but what makes it so uniquely different is it's not so much the history that makes it great, it's the historians that make it great, that share the story. And when you combine that knowledge with a passion, it's unstoppable. And this person is an unstoppable force here in Gettysburg. She brought what was a very rough stone into, um, into the shape of a diamond, the way it would have been when it was originally constructed. And not only do you have this structure and the story that goes with it, but you learn about the specific family that created this, this structure from the beginning and what they went through. So what a legacy, because most folks would have just walked on by. I can't tell you why we were so lucky, um, but I'm, a hundred times things have happened here that it was just meant to be. Before we even thought about moving to Gettysburg, before our friends lived in Bigelowville that we would come to visit, uh, there was a time, a weekend, Del and I went camping down in the Blue Ridge. And on the way home, we're driving up Route 15, and there was a sign for Gettysburg. And he said to me, have you ever been there? And I said, no, have you? He said, no. And we said, well, let's drive through, see what it's like. So we drove up Emmitsburg Road. At the light, we turned, and we drove up the street. And I swear to God, I started screaming and yelling, pull over, pull over, pull over. And Dell pulled over at a parking meter directly across the street, honest to God. And I pointed to this house, and I said, oh, my God gosh, what a beautiful fixer-upper that would be. I said, get, imagine getting rid of the green paint, um, getting rid of the second door you could tell didn't belong, uh, put it, fixing it all up, putting in shutters, putting in window boxes. That could be gorgeous. And Dell looked over here about three times and finally he said, are you talking about that green piece of, and I said, well, you can imagine what he was saying. And I said, yes, use your imagination. That house could be so beautiful. And the reason we chose Gettysburg was not because of the history, not because of the Battle of Gettysburg, because we were these young business professionals and it met our business plan. And there were no bed and breakfasts here in town. And so we started looking around and we ended up buying a, a, an absolutely beautiful home on Carlisle Street. The house, of course, is still there. It, we called it the Old Appleford Inn. And it was from that, actually, that we learned uh, decided to do what we're doing today here at the Schreiber House. Um, people came to visit us, not us, but you know, Gettysburg, um, from literally all around the world to study the battle. And every morning we'd have all these folks sitting at our breakfast table and they would talk about General Lee and the peach orchard and the wheat field and Pickett's Charge. But Del and I noticed that they never really talked about the people and we thought that was kind of sad. So Del and I decided, you know, Maybe one of these days, we're gonna fix up an old house, make it look like the time period, and share little bits of stories from families all around town and what they went through during and after the battle. And that's how we ended up doing the Shriver House. Never ever dreaming we'd end up with the amazing story that we discovered during the restoration of the house. The day we moved in, I met the antique dealer across the street, and he asked me what we were gonna do with the house. And I told him, and he said, oh, are you gonna put in one of these? Are you gonna do this? Are you gonna do that? And I'm like, yeah, sure. He said, you don't know what you're doing, do you? I said, nope, but I'm going to find out. Didn't know anything about miniature golf, didn't know anything about B&Bs, but I'm going to find out. Her passion for what she does, for the storytelling, for getting things right, every day she's niggling at getting the truth out there. I mean, every day she comes and I, when I speak to her, she goes, I've got this because I wanted to correct this and I want to get this right. And it's just a passion and then she conveys that to the multitudes of people that, that visit her and her story um, so it's and it's also an untold story here in town that really needs to be told and it's so interesting and it's interesting because she makes it interesting and what she's done to create uh, her environment to make it interesting is, is spectacular kids ask us every day why like school groups why do we have to hear this family story what makes this guy so important and that's what I love to tell them he is no more important than anyone else who lived in this town but you're gonna be standing on the same floorboards touching the same doorknobs looking through the same glass windows that this family did so you got to hear their story which is to me just breathtaking one day we had about 10 buses or 12 buses in one day. And unlike the park who can do 100 buses, we can only do one at a time. So it was a lot, it was a very, very busy day. 
and the school kids that come in here, they always come in with this, oh my God, this is going to be so painful. And we scare the heck out of them before they come in, not to touch anything in the house. But once they come in and they start getting wrapped up in the story, it's wonderful. Their faces, when we go up into the attic, I actually make every single child sit on the floor all the way up through high school. When they're sitting and they're listening to the story and they're looking at the bullet holes and finding them out the blood stains upstairs in the attic and I see a school teacher behind them going, oh my God, you could hear a pin drop. And one night I came home and I, it, somebody couldn't make it to work that day so I did more buses than I normally would have done. And one bus, I ended up having to entertain them for almost an hour, so I talked for about two hours straight. And I walked, and the last school group was so awesome. And I walked into the house at the end of the night, that night, and Del said, oh my God, you must be exhausted. And in my big Civil War dress, I went, are you kidding me? I have the best job in the world. There's nothing better than this. It's just, that's what keeps me coming back day after day after day. I can't tell you how honored I am to receive the Jim Gettys Award. I mean, it just, it means, I, I was so shocked and I'm just so proud because I know so many people here in town who have done such wonderful things over the years. Um, but I also think that Dell is just as deserving of this as I because we have stood side by side from the day he carried me over the threshold at the Appleford Inn uh, to every little job that we have done here. We've done everything physically ourselves. We redid the, the Appleford Inn. We built the miniature golf course with our own hands. We were here every single day of the restoration of this building here. I, I wore through three pairs of dungarees in less than six months, but Dell and I have been side by side on all of this, so I, I think he deserves this as much as I do, but thank you.